Hi, my name is Nancy, and I have been needle felting since about March, I would say. And I have joined a couple of uh, needle felting groups. And I am a member of the Beginning Needle Felting and Wet Felting 101 group. And the administrator is Terry. Uh, recently, I have uh, been trying to dye my own roving material um, in an effort to save some money. And Terry asked me if I would consider making a video. This is my first ever video, so please bear with me. I'm a little nervous. But this is how I dye my roving. And first of all, I usually go to uh, Michael's and I get Dimensions brand roving because uh, it's just you know cheaper for me. And Michael's has an app. If you have a Michael's store near you, I highly recommend to get the Michael's app and you can get discounts all the time. And this was actually a double pack. This was actually a black and a white pack. I've already taken the black out. And what I do is just uh, take a ruler and it usually rolls out pretty smoothly. And then I just roll it out. And then I measure, what I do is I do uh, three foot pieces. So just take your ruler, you know, measure about three feet out. Now, since this, I've already um, used part of it. It's a little bit more than three foot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just use the whole piece. Usually I just use about three feet. So we're gonna use about a little bit more than three foot. And then, now before you start dyeing, I guess I should name the materials you might need to make sure you have your equipment. I've got a towel that I lay out on the counter for drying. Uh, I've got gloves. Now there's nothing really toxic about my dyeing. I just wear the gloves so that I don't dye my hands. Uh, scissors to open up the Kool-Aid. A bowl. You're gonna want a big pot for your dyeing. I use a spoon and the whisk is for uh, mixing the Kool-Aid. And then you're gonna want some vinegar, which gives you a little bit of uh, acid for the dyeing. It helps the uh, color soak in better. And I use a measuring cup. You could use tablespoons, but I use a measuring cup. I currently don't have any tablespoons. Okay, and I'm sorry, I forgot to grab my Kool-Aid. <laughs> Get it out of my handy little container here. Now today we're doing orange with Halloween coming up. I'm in the process of making pumpkins for Halloween and jack-o'-lanterns, so we're gonna do orange. Now what I do is two packets with my dyeing. That is my formula. I use two packets. Now the first thing you want to do when um, you're going to be dyeing is you want to soak your uh, roving material first so that it absorbs the color better later. It just makes it so much easier. So what I do is just I said you can use tablespoons if you want, just a couple tablespoons. Or what I do is about, give or take, right about one-fourth of a cup is all I do. You really don't need too much. So I do about a fourth of a cup. And then my formula is six cups of water. It doesn't have to be exact, exact, but I do about six cups. That's the formula I use. Okay, six cups of water, a little bit of vinegar, And I go ahead and just kind of roll it out a little bit. Now in this piece, I ended up with a little bonus piece. So I just go ahead and put that in. And then you just want to submerge your material. Doesn't have to be fancy. This is a good place where your gloves come in. Like I said, vinegar is not gonna hurt you. It's not toxic or nothing. It just, I just don't want vinegar on my hands. So what you want to do is submerge it 
all the way and just hold it down for like a minute or two so that it will totally absorb. Now the best thing to do is let that sit for about, I would say a minimum 15 minutes, but I find that half an hour is better, or you can just go longer. But I always let mine sit for, you know, minimum of half an hour is good. Now this has already been soaking pretty much most of the day, so we'll go ahead and use this. Now what I do is go ahead and just pick it up gently, squeeze the water out just a little bit. It doesn't have to be wrung out, totally wrung out, but just squeeze out the water. Okay. And then what I do is go ahead and bring the pan over by the water. This is what I do. And you probably remember this from your childhood, the old shake the packet. And then grabbing my whisk that I forgot. Now I use the whisk to add the Kool-Aid to help uh, the Kool-Aid uh, dissolve really well. So I just give it a good whisk, add a little water, kind of helps maximize the amount of color you got. Now what I do is I save the packages. And I'll tell you in a minute of why I do that. I just kind of rinse them out. That way I can save them. And just make, like I said, just make sure you like whisk it like really good. Make sure the Kool-Aid is dissolved. Give it one last good whisk. Now my method is put it on the stove. And I go ahead and turn it on. Go ahead and turn it on high. And I let that boil first. And that is my method. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and lay out the towel here and save Save a few minutes of time here. Okay, now the reason I save the packets is <laughs> bear with me. We're still we're still new at this. My my husband is helping me. And the reason I save the packets is okay. Even though I keep a notebook of my experiments, which I highly highly recommend, keep a notebook of your experiments. You know how many packets you use, how much water, how much vinegar. I keep a notebook. What I do when I save the packets, like in this case, I used Kool-Aid for this yellow and Flavor-Aid for this yellow. Then what I do, like on the packets, okay, like I used Flavor-Aid here, then I wrote that I used two packets for my experiment. And then that way, if and when I ever want to recreate this color, I remember, oh, I used Flavor-Aid, two packets. And of course, it's always gonna be in my notes too. But this just helps me decide, okay, if I wanna replicate this color, do I wanna do the flavor aid or do I wanna do Kool-Aid? You know, which yellow do I wanna do? Or like in this sample, okay, sometimes the packets of Kool-Aid will have similar colors. Now true, this is a darker blue than this. Okay, now I have not used this Kool-Aid, I haven't dyed with this one yet, but I'm assuming it's going to be a blue. So by saving this packet and this packet, then if these colors come out similar, then I can remember, hey, this gives me a lighter blue, this, this one gives me the darker blue. Or in this case, I made my own, I guess you could call it turquoise. I was going for a green. And on the Kool-Aid, I used two of the blue, but I used three yellow. So I just wrote the number three on the lemonade. And then that way, when I go to replicate this, I can remember I need two of that and three of that. And in this case, I used lemonade and orange to make, it's kind of hard to tell maybe, with our lighting it's kind of hard to tell. This is a yellowish orange. 
So I just remember one lemonade, one orange. So that's the way I do it. I save the packets. I just put them in with my roving. And then that's a good way to remember, you know, what did I use to make that color? So when you go to replicate it, it's easier to remember. Go. Hi, we're back after a brief pause. We are letting the water heat up. It is just starting to boil. So what I do is I just go ahead and turn the heat off and then add your material. Be careful how you add. You don't want to just dump it in there. And then just carefully add your material. And then what I do is take a big spoon and go ahead and submerge it. You want to get it all fully down in the water as quickly as possible. And then what I do is I just let it sit and soak. Now for about the first hour, like maybe every 10 or 15 minutes, go ahead and just check it, take your spoon, and just make sure it's staying down under the water because it, you know, you can see it's kind of floating a little bit. So in order to get good color saturation, like I said, about every 10 or 15 minutes, just come over with your spoon and just, you know, tuck it down in the water, and then I just let it sit and soak. It usually takes about three hours for it to cool down to where you can handle it. Over here I have a pot. I actually dyed this this morning. Same amount of packets, same orange, same water, same vinegar. And then what I do is just bring it over to the sink. And I just give it a good rinse. You just want to rinse it out real good. Squeeze out as much of the excess water as you can. And then come over to your towel. And then just lay it out to dry. As you can tell, this roving here, when I pulled it out of the package, it came out in a couple of pieces. But this is approximately about three foot. Now what I do too is go ahead and spread it out a little bit. Try not to leave any clumps. Because however it dries, if, it, if you leave clumps, it's going to dry in a clump. And then what I do is pick it up. Just put my arms underneath. I have a sunny window. And I just lay, I lay it in the window to dry. You can just leave it on the counter if you want to, but a sunny window does help. And you just leave it till it dries. And to wrap up the video, I'm just going to show a couple of my uh, orange creations. This is a ladybug in process. That gives you an idea of what the orange looks like. And here are a couple of pumpkins. And these were two packs of orange, same amount of water, same amount of vinegar. Two packs of orange. And... I believe that's about about wraps up the video. And Terry, I want to thank you for asking me to make this. And I appreciate, appreciate everybody taking the time to watch it all the way to the end. Thank you.